gorgeous evening here. We're now between Aruba and Venezuela, about to come quite close to the Colombian coast. We can't see everything, so we're just gonna zip past Colombia. And as Phil said earlier, we can't stop in Venezuela. My insurance doesn't even cover us there. Uh, but yeah, I'm now looking forward to my night watch. Most of today I've been feeling very seasick. I'm not even sure why, because it's fairly calm, but happens every now and then and it's very debilitating when it does. I just spent most of the day in zombie mode but feeling good right now and it's going to be a full moon or it's the day after full moon so it should be a beautiful night. Tonight, the moon's right behind me. We also have a lot of human company tonight, which is a bit unusual. It's a heap of boats around Aruba. So my job as always is to avoid them. And the other night watch job is just to trim the sails, reduce the sail area if we need, if the wind picks up any more than it is. Might think about another reef. And that is what a night watch is like. Not all of these boats are on the AIS. They, like this one here, didn't show on the chart plotter. One more great thing. So stars have just aligned for this night watch. The current is a big two knots pushing us along and following seas, waves behind us. So the speed over ground, they're routinely hitting double digits, 10 which is fantastic to see. We've left Venezuela and Aruba behind and you can see just off the coast here is Colombia. As predict wind forecast, the wind's picked up to 20 knots, so it's time to reef in. And afterwards, life jackets. Salty sea dog. Mm. Not too much tension. We're just off the Colombian coast of Santa Marta, and the five kilometer high mountain that rises above it. And even though we're 40, Nordic miles off the coast, you can still feel the impact of that mountain. The acceleration zone it causes, the wind has picked up to around 22 knots, but also it's become a lot more choppier. We're going to jibe soon and head straight for Panama and get away from this coast. Hopefully things will settle down. Yes, we 
could have done with the waves. Be choppy. Those like this, you eat whenever you can. So cooked a little early today. Attempt to eat my rocket without flying over wood. A fish because it's never come up, it's been hanging there for four or five minutes. Dark, very big, and blue on the looks like blue on the fins and the tail. There it is again. That never once comes to the surface, it's not a mammal, it's a fish hunting our water and sea. Last night was a long night. Winds were strong, uh, gusting up to 25, 26, and we had large waves, you know, up to four meters, which meant that we couldn't use wind mode on the autopilot, which means that the yacht follows the wind, and means you can just leave the sails alone and take it easy. No, uh, when uh, the winds are strong, the wind mode tends to wander around and not catch waves in time, and you're in potential danger of getting uh, a, a tip of jibe. So we had to just keep at managing the autopilot, shifting the direction we needed to go in line with the wind. Uh, that uh, you just be on your toes the whole night, hence we're a bit tired. To be fair, I think we've been lucky going past this coast. Uh, friends who've gone here earlier, about a month ago, experienced winds up to 35, 40 knots and waves, steep waves to 5 metres. So what we got, 25 knot winds, 3.5, 4 metre waves, wasn't too bad. Well, as you can see, it's calmed down considerably, although it is still quite choppy. night watch again and this time our fourth and final night to sunglass I've been thinking about the things that I think about on night watch mostly it's about people not just friends and family but people we've met along the way and I don't know if it comes across in the videos but that has been an amazing part of the Tranquilo journey it's the fellow sailors who have been so generous in sharing tips and helping us out and we help others out too but that's just been such a big part of the trip and I don't think I realized that before we started and just turning up in a marina or meeting your neighbor on a mooring buoy um, it's, it's just been such a rich part of the trip um, also of course just enjoying the night the stars the moon the flying fish, sometimes rescuing them when they come on board. A bit less often I think about worries. Um, at the moment we're finding money to pay for next year's yacht insurance, that kind of thing. But far less than at home, so I've definitely become less of a worrier on the Tranquilo journey. And a small part, surprisingly small part, is the sailing. And sometimes I notice that I'm still thinking about people or still just sort of in the zone, enjoying the ocean. I've already trimmed the sail. It's just sort of, yeah, it's become much more second nature over time. So, yeah, and back to the people, just thinking about the quirky stories, the fun we've had, but also just. It's different getting to know sailors or, or someone on this journey somehow. So in Sydney, a very common first question is, 
So what do you do for work? In one way I don't mind it because yes, work is important to me, but it's not this box that defines me. And I don't think we've ever come across, you know, meeting fellow sailors where they say that. <laughs> or not, at least not way into, way, it's later on in getting to know somebody, much later on. And then when you do is, yes, it's such a diverse group of people we are, we sailors. so close you can see some of us right here there's our anchorage with the yachts but we can't go straight for those yachts we're going to do this big detour around the reefs so still a little bit of our journey left to go so tantalizingly close and looks like it's quite a popular spot i can count already 16 masts in the anchorage it's gonna be interesting finding a spot for us video please click like below and subscribe to follow our adventures